Computer security, cyber security or information technology security, IT security is the protection of computer systems from theft or damage to their hardware, software or electronic data, as well as from disruption or misdirection of the services they provide. The field is growing in importance due to increasing reliance on computer systems, the Internet and wireless networks such as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and due to the growth of smart devices, including smartphones, televisions and the various tiny devices that constitute the Internet of Things. Due to its complexity, both in terms of politics and technology, it is also one of the major challenges of the contemporary world. <laughs> Vulnerabilities and attacks A vulnerability is a weakness in design, implementation, operation or internal control. Most of the vulnerabilities that have been discovered are documented in the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures database. An exploitable vulnerability is one for which at least one working attack or exploit exists. Vulnerabilities are often hunted or exploited with the aid of automated tools or manually using customized scripts. To secure a computer system, it is important to understand the attacks that can be made against it, and these threats can typically be classified into one of these categories below. Topic: <laughs> Backdoor A backdoor in a computer system, a cryptosystem or an algorithm, is any secret method of bypassing normal authentication or security controls. They may exist for a number of reasons, including by original design or from poor configuration. They may have been added by an authorized party to allow some legitimate access, or by an attacker for malicious reasons, but regardless of the motives for their existence, they create a vulnerability. Denial-of-service attacks Denial-of-service attacks DOS are designed to make a machine or network resource unavailable to its intended users. Attackers can deny service to individual victims, such as by deliberately entering a wrong password enough consecutive times to cause the victim's account to be locked, or they may overload the capabilities of a machine or network and block all users at once. While a network attack from a single IP address can be blocked by adding a new firewall rule, many forms of distributed denial of service DDoS attacks are possible, where the attack comes from a large number of points, and defending is much more difficult. Such attacks can originate from the zombie computers of a botnet, but a range of other techniques are possible including reflection and amplification attacks, where innocent systems are fooled into sending traffic to the victim. Topic. Direct access attacks An unauthorized user gaining physical access to a computer is most likely able to directly copy data from it. They may also compromise security by making operating system modifications, installing software worms, keyloggers, covert listening devices or using wireless mice. Even when the system is protected by standard security measures, these may be able to be bypassed by booting another operating system or tool from a CD-ROM or other bootable media. Disk encryption and trusted platform module are designed to prevent these attacks. <laughs> Eavesdropping Eavesdropping is the act of surreptitiously listening to a private conversation, typically between hosts on a network. For instance, programs such as Carnivore and Narasinsight have been used by the FBI and NSA to eavesdrop on the systems of Internet service providers. Even machines that operate as a closed system i.e., with no contact to the outside world can be eavesdropped upon via monitoring the faint electromagnetic transmissions generated by the hardware. Tempest is a specification by the NSA referring to these attacks.
Topic: Multivector polymorphic attacks. Surfacing in 2017, a new class of multivector polymorphic cyber threats surfaced that combined several types of attacks and changed form to avoid cybersecurity controls as they spread. These threats have been classified as fifth generation cyber attacks. Topic: <laughs> Phishing Phishing is the attempt to acquire sensitive information such as usernames, passwords, and credit card details directly from users. Phishing is typically carried out by email spoofing or instant messaging, and it often directs users to enter details at a fake website whose look and feel are almost identical to the legitimate one. Preying on a victim's trust, phishing can be classified as a form of social engineering. Topic. Privilege escalation Privilege escalation describes a situation where an attacker with some level of restricted access is able to, without authorization, elevate their privileges or access level. For example, a standard computer user may be able to fool the system into giving them access to restricted data, or even to become root and have full unrestricted access to a system. Topic: <inaudible> Social engineering. Social engineering aims to convince a user to disclose secrets such as passwords, card numbers, etc. by, for example, impersonating a bank, a contractor, or a customer. A common scam involves fake CEO emails sent to accounting and finance departments. In early 2016, the FBI reported that the scam has cost U.S. businesses more than $2 billion in about two years. In May 2016, the Milwaukee Bucks NBA team was the victim of this type of cyber scam with a perpetrator impersonating the team's president Peter Feigen, resulting in the handover of all the team's employees' 2015 W 2 tax forms. Spoofing Spoofing is the act of masquerading as a valid entity through falsification of data such as an IP address or username, in order to gain access to information or resources that one is otherwise unauthorized to obtain. There are several types of spoofing, including Email spoofing, where an attacker forges the sending from, or source address of an email. IP address spoofing, where an attacker alters the source IP address in a network packet to hide their identity or impersonate another computing system. MAC spoofing, where an attacker modifies the media access control MAC address of their network interface to pose as a valid user on a network. Biometric spoofing, where an attacker produces a fake biometric sample to pose as another user. Topic. Tampering Tampering describes a malicious modification of products. So-called, evil-made, attacks and security services planting of surveillance capability into routers are examples. Topic. Information security culture Employee behavior can have a big impact on information security in organizations. Cultural concepts can help different segments of the organization work effectively or work against effectiveness towards information security within an organization. Exploring the relationship between organizational culture and information security culture provides the following definition of information security culture. ISC is the totality of patterns of behavior in an organization that contribute to the protection of information of all kinds. Anderson and Ramers 2014 found that employees often do not see themselves as part of the organization information security effort and often take actions that ignore organizational information security best interests. Research shows information security culture needs to be improved continuously. 
In Information Security Culture from Analysis to Change, authors commented, it's a never-ending process, a cycle of evaluation and change or maintenance, to manage the information security culture, five steps should be taken, pre-evaluation, strategic planning, operative planning, implementation, and post-evaluation. Pre-evaluation, to identify the awareness of information security within employees and to analyze the current security policy. Strategic planning, to come up with a better awareness program, clear targets need to be set. Clustering people is helpful to achieve it. Operative planning, a good security culture can be established based on internal communication, management buy-in, and security awareness and a training program. Implementation – Four stages should be used to implement the information security culture. They are – Commitment of the management Communication with organizational members Courses for all organizational members Commitment of the employees Topic. Systems at risk The growth in the number of computer systems, and the increasing reliance upon them of individuals, businesses, industries and governments means that there are an increasing number of systems at risk. <laughs> <laughs> Financial systems The computer systems of financial regulators and financial institutions like the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SWIFT, investment banks, and commercial banks are prominent hacking targets for cybercriminals interested in manipulating markets and making illicit gains. Websites and apps that accept or store credit card numbers, brokerage accounts, and bank account information are also prominent hacking targets, because of the potential for immediate financial gain from transferring money, making purchases, or selling the information on the black market. In-store payment systems and ATMs have also been tampered with in order to gather customer account data and PINs. Utilities and industrial equipment Computers control functions at many utilities, including coordination of telecommunications, the power grid, nuclear power plants, and valve opening and closing in water and gas networks. The Internet is a potential attack vector for such machines if connected, but the Stuxnet worm demonstrated that even equipment controlled by computers not connected to the Internet can be vulnerable. In 2014, the Computer Emergency Readiness Team, a division of the Department of Homeland Security, investigated 79 hacking incidents at energy companies. Vulnerabilities in smart meters many of which use local radio or cellular communications can cause problems with billing fraud. Aviation The aviation industry is very reliant on a series of complex systems which could be attacked. A simple power outage at one airport can cause repercussions worldwide. Much of the system relies on radio transmissions, which could be disrupted, and controlling aircraft over oceans is especially dangerous because radar surveillance only extends 175 to 225 miles offshore. There is also potential for attack from within an aircraft, in Europe, with the Pan-European Network Service and NUPINS, and in the U.S. with the next-gen program, air navigation service providers are moving to create their own dedicated networks. The consequences of a successful attack range from loss of confidentiality to loss of system integrity, air traffic control outages, loss of aircraft, and even loss of life. Topic. Consumer devices Desktop computers and laptops are commonly targeted to gather passwords or financial account information, or to construct a botnet to attack another target. 
smartphones, tablet computers, smart watches, and other mobile devices such as quantified self devices like activity trackers have sensors such as cameras, microphones, GPS receivers, compasses, and accelerometers which could be exploited, and may collect personal information, including sensitive health information. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cell phone networks on any of these devices could be used as attack vectors, and sensors might be remotely activated after a successful breach. The increasing number of home automation devices such as the Nest thermostat are also potential targets. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Large corporations. Large corporations are common targets. In many cases this is aimed at financial gain through identity theft and involves data breaches such as the loss of millions of clients' credit card details by Home Depot, Staples, Target Corporation, and the most recent breach of Equifax. Some cyber attacks are ordered by foreign governments. These governments engage in cyber warfare with the intent to spread their propaganda, sabotage, or spy on their targets. Many people believe the Russian government played a major role in the U.S. presidential election of 2016 by using Twitter and Facebook to affect the results of the election. Medical records have been targeted for use in general identify theft, health insurance fraud, and impersonating patients to obtain prescription drugs for recreational purposes or resale. Although cyber threats continue to increase, 62% of all organizations did not increase security training for their business in 2015. Not all attacks are financially motivated, however. For example, security firm HB Gary Federal suffered a serious series of attacks in 2011 from hacktivist group Anonymous in retaliation for the firm's CEO claiming to have infiltrated their group, and in the Sony Pictures attack of 2014, the motive appears to have been to embarrass with data leaks, and cripple the company by wiping workstations and servers. Automobiles Vehicles are increasingly computerized, with engine timing, cruise control, anti-lock brakes, seat belt tensioners, door locks, airbags and advanced driver assistance systems on many models. Additionally, connected cars may use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to communicate with onboard consumer devices and the cell phone network. Self-driving cars are expected to be even more complex. All of these systems carry some security risk, and such issues have gained wide attention. Simple examples of risk include a malicious compact disc being used as an attack vector, and the car's onboard microphones being used for eavesdropping. However, if access is gained to a car's internal controller area network, the danger is much greater, and in a widely publicized 2015 test, hackers remotely carjacked a vehicle from 10 miles away and drove it into a ditch. Manufacturers are reacting in a number of ways, with Tesla in 2016 pushing out some security fixes over the air into its car's computer systems, in the area of autonomous vehicles. In September 2016 the United States Department of Transportation announced some initial safety standards, and called for states to come up with uniform policies. <laughs> <laughs> Government Government and military computer systems are commonly attacked by activists and foreign powers. Local and regional government infrastructure such as traffic light controls, police and intelligence agency communications, personnel records, student records, and financial systems are also potential targets as they are now all largely computerized. Passports and government ID cards that control access to facilities which use RFID can be vulnerable to cloning. <laughs> <laughs> Internet of Things and physical vulnerabilities 
The Internet of Things (IoT) is the network of physical objects such as devices, vehicles, and buildings that are embedded with electronics, software, sensors, and network connectivity that enables them to collect and exchange data. And concerns have been raised that this is being developed without appropriate consideration of the security challenges involved, while the IoT creates opportunities for more direct integration of the physical world into computer-based systems. It also provides opportunities for misuse. In particular, as the Internet of Things spreads widely, cyber attacks are likely to become an increasingly physical rather than simply virtual threat. If a front door's lock is connected to the Internet, and can be locked, unlocked from a phone, then a criminal could enter the home at the press of a button from a stolen or hacked phone. People could stand to lose much more than their credit card numbers in a world controlled by IoT-enabled devices. Thieves have also used electronic means to circumvent non-internet connected hotel door locks. <laughs> <laughs> Medical systems Medical devices have either been successfully attacked or had potentially deadly vulnerabilities demonstrated, including both in hospital diagnostic equipment and implanted devices including pacemakers and insulin pumps. There are many reports of hospitals and hospital organizations getting hacked, including ransomware attacks, Windows XP exploits, viruses, and data breaches of sensitive data stored on hospital servers. On 28 December 2016 the U.S. Food and Drug Administration released its recommendations for how medical device manufacturers should maintain the security of Internet-connected devices, but no structure for enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> Energy sector In distributed generation systems, the risk of cyber attacks is real, according to Daily Energy Insider. An attack could cause a loss of power in a large area for a long period of time, and such an attack could have just as severe consequences as a natural disaster. The District of Columbia is considering creating a Distributed Energy Resources authority within the city, with the goal being for customers to have more insight into their own energy use and giving the local electric utility, PEPCO, the chance to better estimate energy demand. The DC proposal, however, would allow third-party vendors to create numerous points of energy distribution, which could potentially create more opportunities for cyber attackers to threaten the electric grid. Impact of security breaches Serious financial damage has been caused by security breaches, but because there is no standard model for estimating the cost of an incident, the only data available is that which is made public by the organizations involved. Several computer security consulting firms produce estimates of total worldwide losses attributable to virus and worm attacks and to hostile digital acts in general. The 2003 loss estimates by these firms range from $13 billion worms and viruses only, to $226 billion for all forms of covert attacks. The reliability of these estimates is often challenged, the underlying methodology is basically anecdotal. Security breaches continue to cost businesses billions of dollars but a survey revealed that 66% of security staffs do not believe senior leadership takes cyber precautions as a strategic priority, however, reasonable estimates of the financial cost of security breaches can actually help organizations make rational investment decisions. According to the classic Gordon Loeb model analyzing the optimal investment level in information security, one can conclude that the amount a firm spends to protect information should generally be only a small fraction of the expected loss i.e., the expected value of the loss resulting from a cyber, information security breach. <laughs> Attacker motivation. As with physical security, the motivations for breaches of computer security vary between attackers. 
Some are thrill seekers or vandals, some are activists, others are criminals looking for financial gain. State sponsored attackers are now common and well resourced, but started with amateurs such as Marcus Hess, who hacked for the KGB, as recounted by Clifford Stoll, in The Cuckoo's Egg. A standard part of threat modeling for any particular system is to identify what might motivate an attack on that system, and who might be motivated to breach it. The level and detail of precautions will vary depending on the system to be secured. A home personal computer, bank, and classified military network face very different threats, even when the underlying technologies in use are similar. Topic: <laughs> Computer protection countermeasures. In computer security a countermeasure is an action, device, procedure, or technique that reduces a threat, a vulnerability, or an attack by eliminating or preventing it, by minimizing the harm it can cause, or by discovering and reporting it so that corrective action can be taken. Some common countermeasures are listed in the following sections. Topic. Security by design. Security by design, or alternately secure by design, means that the software has been designed from the ground up to be secure. In this case, security is considered as a main feature. Some of the techniques in this approach include The principle of least privilege, where each part of the system has only the privileges that are needed for its function. That way even if an attacker gains access to that part, they have only limited access to the whole system. Automated theorem proving to prove the correctness of crucial software subsystems. Code reviews and unit testing, approaches to make modules more secure where formal correctness proofs are not possible. Defense in depth, where the design is such that more than one subsystem needs to be violated to compromise the integrity of the system and the information it holds. Default secure settings, and designed to fail secure rather than fail insecure. See fail safe for the equivalent in safety engineering. Ideally, a secure system should require a deliberate, conscious, knowledgeable and free decision on the part of legitimate authorities in order to make it insecure. Audit trails tracking system activity, so that when a security breach occurs, the mechanism and extent of the breach can be determined. Storing audit trails remotely, where they can only be appended to, can keep intruders from covering their tracks. Full disclosure of all vulnerabilities, to ensure that the window of vulnerability is kept as short as possible when bugs are discovered. <laughs> <laughs> Security architecture The Open Security Architecture Organization defines IT security architecture as the design artifacts that describe how the security controls security countermeasures are positioned, and how they relate to the overall information technology architecture. These controls serve the purpose to maintain the system's quality attributes, confidentiality, integrity, availability, accountability and assurance services." Techopedia defines security architecture as a unified security design that addresses the necessities and potential risks involved in a certain scenario or environment. It also specifies when and where to apply security controls. The design process is generally reproducible. The key attributes of security architecture are the relationship of different components and how they depend on each other. The determination of controls based on risk assessment, good practice, finances, and legal matters. The standardization of controls. Topic: <laughs> Security measures. A state of computer security is the conceptual ideal, attained by the use of the three processes, threat prevention, detection, and response. 
These processes are based on various policies and system components, which include the following User account access controls and cryptography can protect systems files and data, respectively. Firewalls are by far the most common prevention systems from a network security perspective as they can if properly configured, shield access to internal network services, and block certain kinds of attacks through packet filtering. Firewalls can be both hardware or software based. Intrusion Detection System products are designed to detect network attacks in progress and assist in post-attack forensics, while audit trails and logs serve a similar function for individual systems. Response is necessarily defined by the assessed security requirements of an individual system and may cover the range from simple upgrade of protections to notification of legal authorities, counter-attacks, and the like. In some special cases, a complete destruction of the compromised system is favored, as it may happen that not all the compromised resources are detected. Today, computer security comprises mainly preventive measures, like firewalls or an exit procedure. A firewall can be defined as a way of filtering network data between a host or a network and another network, such as the Internet, and can be implemented as software running on the machine, hooking into the network stack or, in the case of most Unix-based operating systems such as Linux, built into the operating system kernel, to provide real-time filtering and blocking. Another implementation is a so-called physical firewall which consists of a separate machine filtering network traffic. Firewalls are common amongst machines that are permanently connected to the Internet. Some organizations are turning to big data platforms, such as Apache Hadoop, to extend data accessibility and machine learning to detect advanced persistent threats. However, relatively few organizations maintain computer systems with effective detection systems, and fewer still have organized response mechanisms in place. As a result, as Reuters points out, companies for the first time report they are losing more through electronic theft of data than physical stealing of assets. The primary obstacle to effective eradication of cyber crime could be traced to excessive reliance on firewalls and other automated detection systems. Yet it is basic evidence gathering by using packet capture appliances that puts criminals behind bars. Topic. Vulnerability management Vulnerability management is the cycle of identifying, and remediating or mitigating vulnerabilities, especially in software and firmware. Vulnerability management is integral to computer security and network security. Vulnerabilities can be discovered with a vulnerability scanner, which analyzes a computer system in search of known vulnerabilities, such as open ports, insecure software configuration, and susceptibility to malware. Beyond vulnerability scanning, many organizations contract outside security auditors to run regular penetration tests against their systems to identify vulnerabilities. In some sectors this is a contractual requirement. Topic. Reducing vulnerabilities While formal verification of the correctness of computer systems is possible, it is not yet common. Operating systems formally verified include Cell 4, and SYSGO's PICAOS, but these make up a very small percentage of the market. Two-factor authentication is a method for mitigating unauthorized access to a system or sensitive information. It requires something you know, a password or PIN, and something you have, a card, dongle, cell phone, or other piece of hardware. This increases security as an unauthorized person needs both of these to gain access. Social engineering and direct computer access physical attacks can only be prevented by non-computer means, which can be difficult to enforce, relative to the sensitivity of the information. Training is often involved to help mitigate this risk, but even in a highly disciplined environment e.g. military organizations, social engineering attacks can still be difficult to foresee and prevent. 
inoculation, derived from inoculation theory, seeks to prevent social engineering and other fraudulent tricks or traps by instilling a resistance to persuasion attempts through exposure to similar or related attempts. It is possible to reduce an attacker's chances by keeping systems up to date with security patches and updates, using a security scanner or, and hiring competent people responsible for security. This statement is ambiguous. Even systems developed by competent people get penetrated. The effects of data loss – damage can be reduced by careful backing up and insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Hardware protection mechanisms While hardware may be a source of insecurity, such as with microchip vulnerabilities maliciously introduced during the manufacturing process, hardware-based or assisted computer security also offers an alternative to software-only computer security. Using devices and methods such as dongles, trusted platform modules, intrusion-aware cases, drive locks, disabling USB ports, and mobile-enabled access may be considered more secure due to the physical access or sophisticated backdoor access required in order to be compromised. Each of these is covered in more detail below. USB dongles are typically used in software licensing schemes to unlock software capabilities, but they can also be seen as a way to prevent unauthorized access to a computer or other device's software. The dongle, or key, essentially creates a secure encrypted tunnel between the software application and the key. The principle is that an encryption scheme on the dongle, such as Advanced Encryption Standard AES, provides a stronger measure of security, since it is harder to hack and replicate the dongle than to simply copy the native software to another machine and use it. Another security application for dongles is to use them for accessing web-based content such as cloud software or virtual private networks VPNs. In addition, a USB dongle can be configured to lock or unlock a computer. Trusted Platform Modules TPMs, secure devices by integrating cryptographic capabilities onto access devices, through the use of microprocessors, also called computers on a chip. TPMs used in conjunction with server-side software offer a way to detect and authenticate hardware devices, preventing unauthorized network and data access. Computer case intrusion detection refers to a device, typically a push-button switch, which detects when a computer case is opened. The firmware or BIOS is programmed to show an alert to the operator when the computer is booted up the next time. Drive locks are essentially software tools to encrypt hard drives, making them inaccessible to thieves. Tools exist specifically for encrypting external drives as well. Disabling USB ports is a security option for preventing unauthorized and malicious access to an otherwise secure computer. Infected USB dongles connected to a network from a computer inside the firewall are considered by the magazine network world as the most common hardware threat facing computer networks. Disconnecting or disabling peripheral devices like camera, GPS, removable storage etc. that are not in use. Mobile-enabled access devices are growing in popularity due to the ubiquitous nature of cell phones. Built-in capabilities such as Bluetooth, the newer Bluetooth Low Energy near-field communication NFC on non-iOS devices and biometric validation such as thumbprint readers, as well as QR code reader software designed for mobile devices, offer new, secure ways for mobile phones to connect to access control systems. These control systems provide computer security and can also be used for controlling access to secure buildings. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Secure operating systems. One use of the term computer security refers to technology that is used to implement secure operating systems. In the 1980s the United States Department of Defense DOD used the Orange Book standards, but the current international standard ISO, IEC 15408, Common Criteria, 
defines a number of progressively more stringent evaluation assurance levels. Many common operating systems meet the EAL-4 standard of being methodically designed, tested and reviewed, but the formal verification required for the highest levels means that they are uncommon. An example of an EAL-6 semi-formally verified design and tested System is Integrity 178B, which is used in the Airbus A380 and several military jets. <inaudible> <inaudible> secure coding In software engineering, secure coding aims to guard against the accidental introduction of security vulnerabilities. It is also possible to create software designed from the ground up to be secure. Such systems are secure by design. Beyond this, formal verification aims to prove the correctness of the algorithms underlying a system. Important for cryptographic protocols for example. Topic: <laughs> Capabilities and access control lists. Within computer systems, two of many security models capable of enforcing privilege separation are access control lists ACLs and capability-based security. Using ACLs to confine programs has been proven to be insecure in many situations, such as if the host computer can be tricked into indirectly allowing restricted file access, an issue known as the confused deputy problem. It has also been shown that the promise of ACLs of giving access to an object to only one person can never be guaranteed in practice. Both of these problems are resolved by capabilities. This does not mean practical flaws exist in all ACL-based systems, but only that the designers of certain utilities must take responsibility to ensure that they do not introduce flaws. Capabilities have been mostly restricted to research operating systems, while commercial OSs still use ACLs. Capabilities can, however, also be implemented at the language level, leading to a style of programming that is essentially a refinement of standard object-oriented design. An open source project in the area is the e language. Topic: <inaudible> End user security training. The end user is widely recognized as the weakest link in the security chain and it is estimated that more than 90% of security incidents and breaches involve some kind of human error. Among the most commonly recorded forms of errors and misjudgment are poor password management, the inability to recognize misleading URLs and to identify fake websites and dangerous email attachments. As the human component of cyber risk is particularly relevant in determining the global cyber risk an organization is facing, security awareness training, at all levels, does not only provides formal compliance with regulatory and industry mandates but is considered essential in reducing cyber risk and protecting individuals and companies from the great majority of cyber threats. The focus on the end user represents a profound cultural change for many security practitioners, who have traditionally approached cybersecurity exclusively from a technical perspective, and moves along the lines suggested by major security centers to develop a culture of cyber awareness within the organization, recognizing that a security aware user provides an important line of defense against cyber attacks. Topic. Response to breaches Responding forcefully to attempted security breaches in the manner that one would for attempted physical security breaches is often very difficult for a variety of reasons. Identifying attackers is difficult, as they are often in a different jurisdiction to the systems they attempt to breach, and operate through proxies, temporary anonymous dial-up accounts, wireless connections, and other anonymizing procedures which make backtracing difficult and are often located in yet another jurisdiction. If they successfully breach security, they are often able to delete logs to cover their tracks. 
The sheer number of attempted attacks is so large that organizations cannot spend time pursuing each attacker a typical home user with a permanent e cable modem connection will be attacked at least several times per day, so more attractive targets could be presumed to see many more. Note however, that most of the sheer bulk of these attacks are made by automated vulnerability scanners and computer worms. Law enforcement officers are often unfamiliar with information technology, and so lack the skills and interest in pursuing attackers. There are also budgetary constraints. It has been argued that the high cost of technology, such as DNA testing, and improved forensics mean less money for other kinds of law enforcement, so the overall rate of criminals not getting dealt with goes up as the cost of the technology increases. In addition, the identification of attackers across a network may require logs from various points in the network and in many countries, the release of these records to law enforcement with the exception of being voluntarily surrendered by a network administrator or a system administrator requires a search warrant and, depending on the circumstances, the legal proceedings required can be drawn out to the point where the records are either regularly destroyed, or the information is no longer relevant. The United States government spends the largest amount of money every year on cyber security. The United States has a yearly budget of $28 billion. Canada has the second highest annual budget at $1 billion. Australia has the third highest budget with only $70 million. Topic: <laughs> Types of security and privacy. Access control Anti-keyloggers Anti-malware Anti-spyware Anti-subversion software Anti-tamper software Antivirus software Cryptographic software Computer-aided dispatch CAD, Firewall Intrusion detection system IDS, Intrusion prevention system IPS, Log management software Records management Sandbox Security information management SIEM Anti-theft Parental control Software and operating system updating Incident response planning Incident response is an organized approach to addressing and managing the aftermath of a computer security incident or compromise with the goal of preventing a breach or thwarting a cyber attack. An incident that is not identified and managed at the time of intrusion, typically escalates to a more impactful event such as a data breach or system failure. The intended outcome of a computer security incident response plan is to limit damage and reduce recovery time and costs. Responding to compromises quickly can mitigate exploited vulnerabilities, restore services and processes, and minimize impact and losses. Incident response planning allows an organization to establish a series of best practices to stop an intrusion before it causes damage. Typical incident response plans contain a set of written instructions that outline the organization's response to a cyber attack. Without a documented plan in place, an organization may not successfully detect an intrusion or compromise and stakeholders may not understand their roles, processes and procedures during an escalation, slowing the organization's response and resolution. There are four key components of a computer security incident response plan, preparation, preparing stakeholders on the procedures for handling computer security incidents or compromises detection and analysis, identifying and investigating suspicious activity to confirm a security incident, prioritizing the response based on impact and coordinating notification of the incident containment, eradication and recovery, isolating affected systems to prevent escalation and limit impact pinpointing the genesis of the incident, removing malware, affected systems and bad actors from the environment and restoring systems and data when a threat no longer remains post-incident activity, post-mortem analysis of the incident, its root cause and the organization's response with the intent of improving the incident response plan and future response efforts. 
Topic: Notable attacks and breaches. Some illustrative examples of different types of computer security breaches are given below. Robert Morris and the first computer worm In 1988, only 60,000 computers were connected to the Internet, and most were mainframes, minicomputers and professional workstations. On 2 November 1988, many started to slow down, because they were running a malicious code that demanded processor time and that spread itself to other computers, the first Internet computer worm. The software was traced back to 23-year-old Cornell University graduate student Robert Tappan Morris, Jr. who said he wanted to count how many machines were connected to the Internet. Topic. Rome Laboratory In 1994, over a hundred intrusions were made by unidentified crackers into the Rome Laboratory, the U.S. Air Force's main command and research facility. Using Trojan horses, hackers were able to obtain unrestricted access to Rome's networking systems and remove traces of their activities. The intruders were able to obtain classified files, such as air tasking order systems data and furthermore able to penetrate connected networks of National Aeronautics and Space Administration's Goddard Space Flight Center, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, some defense contractors, and other private sector organizations, by posing as a trusted Rome Center user. TJX customer credit card details In early 2007, American apparel and home goods company TJX announced that it was the victim of an unauthorized computer systems intrusion and that the hackers had accessed a system that stored data on credit card, debit card, check, and merchandise return transactions. Stuxnet attack In 2010 the computer worm known as Stuxnet reportedly ruined almost one-fifth of Iran's nuclear centrifuges. It did so by disrupting industrial programmable logic controllers PLCs in a targeted attack. This is generally believed to have been launched by Israel and the United States, although neither has publicly admitted this. Global surveillance disclosures In early 2013, documents provided by Edward Snowden were published by The Washington Post and The Guardian exposing the massive scale of NSA global surveillance. There were also indications that the NSA may have inserted a back door in a NIST standard for encryption. This standard was later withdrawn due to widespread criticism. The NSA additionally were revealed to have tapped the links between Google's data centers. Topic: <laughs> Target and Home Depot breaches. In 2013 and 2014, a Russian Ukrainian hacking ring known as Reskater broke into Target Corporation computers in 2013, stealing roughly 40 million credit cards, and then Home Depot computers in 2014, stealing between 53 and 56 million credit card numbers. Warnings were delivered at both corporations, but ignored. Physical security breaches using self-checkout machines are believed to have played a large role. The malware utilized is absolutely unsophisticated and uninteresting says Jim Walter, director of threat intelligence operations at security technology company McAfee, meaning that the heists could have easily been stopped by existing antivirus software had administrators responded to the warnings. The size of the thefts has resulted in major attention from state and federal United States authorities and the investigation is ongoing. Office of Personnel Management data breach 
In April 2015, the Office of Personnel Management discovered it had been hacked more than a year earlier in a data breach, resulting in the theft of approximately 21.5 million personnel records handled by the office. The Office of Personnel Management hack has been described by federal officials as among the largest breaches of government data in the history of the United States. Data targeted in the breach included personally identifiable information such as social security numbers, names, dates and places of birth, addresses, and fingerprints of current and former government employees as well as anyone who had undergone a government background check. It is believed the hack was perpetrated by Chinese hackers. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Madison breach. In July 2015, a hacker group known as the Impact Team successfully breached the extramarital relationship website Ashley Madison, created by Avid Life Media. The group claimed that they had taken not only company data but user data as well. After the breach, the Impact Team dumped emails from the company's CEO, to prove their point, and threatened to dump customer data unless the website was taken down permanently. When Avid Life Media did not take the site offline the group released two more compressed files, one 9.7 GB and the second 20 GB. After the second data dump, Avid Life Media CEO Noel Biderman resigned, but the website remained functioning. Topic: <laughs> Legal issues and global regulation. International legal issues of cyber attacks are complicated in nature. There is no global base of common rules to judge, and eventually punish, cyber crimes and cyber criminals, and where security firms or agencies do locate the cybercriminal behind the creation of a particular piece of malware or form of cyber attack, often the local authorities cannot take action due to lack of laws under which to prosecute. Proving attribution for cyber crimes and cyber attacks is also a major problem for all law enforcement agencies. Computer viruses switch from one country to another, from one jurisdiction to another, moving around the world, using the fact that we don't have the capability to globally police operations like this. So the Internet is as if someone had given free plane tickets to all the online criminals of the world. The use of techniques such as dynamic DNS, fast flux and bulletproof servers add to the difficulty of investigation and enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> Role of government The role of the government is to make regulations to force companies and organizations to protect their systems, infrastructure and information from any cyber attacks, but also to protect its own national infrastructure such as the national power grid. Government's regulatory role in cyberspace is complicated. For some, cyberspace was seen virtual space that was to remain free of government intervention, as can be seen in many of today's libertarian blockchain and Bitcoin discussions. Many government officials and experts think that the government should do more and that there is a crucial need for improved regulation, mainly due to the failure of the private sector to solve efficiently the cybersecurity problem. R. Clark said during a panel discussion at the RSA Security Conference in San Francisco, he believes that the industry only responds when you threaten regulation. If the industry doesn't respond to the threat, you have to follow through. On the other hand, executives from the private sector agree that improvements are necessary, but think that the government intervention would affect their ability to innovate efficiently. Daniel R. McCarthy analyzed this public-private partnership in cybersecurity and reflected on the role of cybersecurity in the broader constitution of political order. Topic international actions Many different teams and organizations exist, including, the Forum of Incident Response and Security Teams First is the Global Association of CSIRTs. The US CERT, AT&T, Apple, Cisco, McAfee, Microsoft are all members of this international team. 
The Council of Europe helps protect societies worldwide from the threat of cybercrime through the Convention on Cybercrime. The purpose of the Messaging Anti-Abuse Working Group is to bring the messaging industry together to work collaboratively and to successfully address the various forms of messaging abuse, such as spam, viruses, denial-of-service attacks and other messaging exploitations. France Telecom, Facebook, AT&T, Apple, Cisco, Sprint are some of the members of the MAAWG. ENISA, the European Network and Information Security Agency ENISA, is an agency of the European Union with the objective to improve network and information security in the European Union. Europe On 14 April 2016 the European Parliament and Council of the European Union adopted the General Data Protection Regulation GDPR EU 2016-679. GDPR, which became enforceable beginning 25 May 2018, provides for data protection and privacy for all individuals within the European Union EU and the European Economic Area EEA. GDPR requires that business processes that handle personal data be built with data protection by design and by default. GDPR also requires that certain organizations appoint a data protection officer DPO. Topic: <laughs> National Actions. Topic. Computer emergency response teams Most countries have their own computer emergency response team to protect network security. Topic. Canada Since 2010, Canada has had a cyber security strategy, this functions as a counterpart document to the National Strategy and Action Plan for Critical Infrastructure. The strategy has three main pillars, securing government systems, securing vital private cyber systems, and helping Canadians to be secure online. There is also a cyber incident management framework to provide a coordinated response in the event of a cyber incident. The Canadian Cyber Incident Response Centre (CCIRC) is responsible for mitigating and responding to threats to Canada's critical infrastructure and cyber systems. It provides support to mitigate cyber threats, technical support to respond and recover from targeted cyber attacks, and provides online tools for members of Canada's critical infrastructure sectors. It posts regular cyber security bulletins and operates an online reporting tool where individuals and organizations can report a cyber incident. To inform the general public on how to protect themselves online, Public Safety Canada has partnered with Stop, Think, Connect, a coalition of non profit, private sector, and government organizations, and launched the Cyber Security Cooperation Programme. They also run the GetCyberSafe portal for Canadian citizens, and Cyber Security Awareness Month during October. Public Safety Canada aims to begin an evaluation of Canada's cyber security strategy in early 2015. Topic: <laughs> China. China's central leading group for Internet security and informatization Chinese, Zhongyang Wang Luo and Quanhe Xinxi Hua Ling Dao Xiao Zhu was established on 27 February 2014. This leading small group LSG of the Communist Party of China is headed by General Secretary Xi Jinping himself and is staffed with relevant party and state decision makers. The LSG was created to overcome the incoherent policies and overlapping responsibilities that characterized China's former cyberspace decision-making mechanisms. The LSG oversees policy-making in the economic, political, cultural, social and military fields as they relate to network security and IT strategy. 
This LSG also coordinates major policy initiatives in the international arena that promote norms and standards favored by the Chinese government and that emphasize the principle of national sovereignty in cyberspace. Germany Berlin starts National Cyber Defense Initiative On 16 June 2011, the German Minister for Home Affairs, officially opened the new German NCAZ National Center for Cyber Defense Nationales Cyber Abwehrzentrum located in Bonn. The NCAZ closely cooperates with BSI Federal Office for Information Security Bundesamt für Sicherheit in der Informationstechnik, BKA Federal Police Organization Bundeskriminalamt Deutschland, BND Federal Intelligence Service Bundesnachrichtendienst, MAD Military Intelligence Service AMT für den Militärischen Abschirmdienst and other national organizations in Germany taking care of national security aspects. According to the minister the primary task of the new organization founded on 23 February 2011, is to detect and prevent attacks against the national infrastructure and mentioned incidents like Stuxnet. <inaudible> <inaudible> India Some provisions for cyber security have been incorporated into rules framed under the Information Technology Act 2000. The National Cyber Security Policy 2013 is a policy framework by Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology which aims to protect the public and private infrastructure from cyber attacks and safeguard information, such as personal information of web users, financial and banking information, and sovereign data. CERTIN is the nodal agency which monitors the cyber threats in the country. The post of National Cyber Security Coordinator has also been created in the Prime Minister's Office PMO. The Indian Companies Act 2013 has also introduced cyber law and cyber security obligations on the part of Indian directors. Some provisions for cyber security have been incorporated into rules framed under the Information Technology Act 2000 update in 2013. Topic: <laughs> South Korea. Following cyber attacks in the first half of 2013, when the government, news media, television station, and bank websites were compromised, the national government committed to the training of 5,000 new cybersecurity experts by 2017. The South Korean government blamed its northern counterpart for these attacks, as well as incidents that occurred in 2009, 2011, and 2012, but Pyongyang denies the accusations. United States Legislation The 1986-18 USC Section 1030, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act is the key legislation. It prohibits unauthorized access or damage of "...protected computers." as defined in 18 U.S.C. Section 1030 e. 2. Although various other measures have been proposed, none has succeeded. In 2013, Executive Order 13636 Improving Critical Infrastructure Cybersecurity was signed, which prompted the creation of the NIST Cybersecurity Framework, Standardized Government Testing Services, the General Services Administration GSA has standardized the penetration test service as a pre-vetted support service, to rapidly address potential vulnerabilities, and stop adversaries before they impact U.S. federal, state and local governments. These services are commonly referred to as Highly Adaptive Cybersecurity Services hacks and are listed at the U.S. GSA Advantage website. PSEE more information here, penetration test hashtag standardized government penetration test services. Agencies 
The Department of Homeland Security has a dedicated division responsible for the response system, risk management program and requirements for cybersecurity in the United States called the National Cyber Security Division. The division is home to U.S. CERT operations and the National Cyber Alert System. The National Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Center brings together government organizations responsible for protecting computer networks and networked infrastructure. The third priority of the Federal Bureau of Investigation (FBI) is to protect the United States against cyber-based attacks and high-technology crimes. And they, along with the National White Collar Crime Center (NW3C) and the Bureau of Justice Assistance (BJA), are part of the multi-agency task force, the Internet Crime Complaint Center, also known as IC3. In addition to its own specific duties, the FBI participates alongside nonprofit organizations such as InfraGuard. In the Criminal Division of the United States Department of Justice, operates a section called the Computer Crime and Intellectual Property Section. The CCIPS is in charge of investigating computer crime and intellectual property crime and is specialized in the search and seizure of digital evidence in computers and networks. In 2017, CCIPS published a framework for a vulnerability disclosure program for online systems to help organizations clearly describe authorized vulnerability disclosure and discovery conduct, thereby substantially reducing the likelihood that such described activities will result in a civil or criminal violation of law under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act 18 U.S.C. Section 1030. The United States Cyber Command, also known as USCYBERCOM, is tasked with the defense of specified Department of Defense information networks and ensures the security, integrity, and governance of government and military IT infrastructure and assets. It has no role in the protection of civilian networks. The U.S. Federal Communications Commission's role in cybersecurity is to strengthen the protection of critical communications infrastructure, to assist in maintaining the reliability of networks during disasters, to aid in swift recovery after, and to ensure that first responders have access to effective communications services. The Food and Drug Administration has issued guidance for medical devices, and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is concerned with automotive cybersecurity. After being criticized by the Government Accountability Office, and following successful attacks on airports and claimed attacks on airplanes, the Federal Aviation Administration has devoted funding to securing systems on board the planes of private manufacturers, and the Aircraft Communications Addressing and Reporting System. Concerns have also been raised about the future next generation air transportation system. Topic. Computer Emergency Readiness Team Computer Emergency Response Team is a name given to expert groups that handle computer security incidents. In the U.S., two distinct organizations exist, although they do work closely together. U.S. CERT, part of the National Cyber Security Division of the United States Department of Homeland Security. CERT, CC, created by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency and run by the Software Engineering Institute say. Topic. Modern warfare There is growing concern that cyberspace will become the next theater of warfare. As Mark Clayton from the Christian Science Monitor described in an article titled, The New Cyber Arms Race. In the future, wars will not just be fought by soldiers with guns or with planes that drop bombs. They will also be fought with the click of a mouse a half a world away that unleashes carefully weaponized computer programs that disrupt or destroy critical industries like utilities, transportation, communications, and energy. Such attacks could also disable military networks that control the movement of troops, the path of jet fighters, the command and control of warships. This has led to new terms such as cyberwarfare and cyberterrorism. 
The United States Cyber Command was created in 2009 and many other countries have similar forces. Topic: Careers. Cybersecurity is a fast-growing field of IT concerned with reducing organizations' risk of hack or data breach. According to research from the Enterprise Strategy Group, 46% of organizations say that they have a problematic shortage of cybersecurity skills in 2016, up from 28% in 2015. Commercial, government and non-governmental organizations all employ cybersecurity professionals. The fastest increases in demand for cybersecurity workers are in industries managing increasing volumes of consumer data such as finance, health care, and retail. However, the use of the term, cybersecurity, is more prevalent in government job descriptions. Typical cyber security job titles and descriptions include Topic. Security analyst Analyzes and assesses vulnerabilities in the infrastructure software, hardware, networks, investigates using available tools and countermeasures to remedy the detected vulnerabilities, and recommends solutions and best practices. Analyzes and assesses damage to the data, infrastructure as a result of security incidents, examines available recovery tools and processes, and recommends solutions. Tests for compliance with security policies and procedures. May assist in the creation, implementation, or management of security solutions. Topic. Security engineer. Performs security monitoring, security and data, logs analysis, and forensic analysis, to detect security incidents, and mounts the incident response. Investigates and utilizes new technologies and processes to enhance security capabilities and implement improvements. May also review code or perform other security engineering methodologies. Security architect Designs a security system or major components of a security system, and may head a security design team building a new security system. <laughs> security administrator Installs and manages organization-wide security systems may also take on some of the tasks of a security analyst in smaller organizations. <laughs> Chief Information Security Officer CISO. A high-level management position responsible for the entire Information Security Division, staff. The position may include hands-on technical work. Topic. Chief Security Officer CSO. A high-level management position responsible for the entire security division, staff. A newer position now deemed needed as security risks grow. Topic. Security Consultant, Specialist, Intelligence Broad titles that encompass any one or all of the other roles or titles tasked with protecting computers, networks, software, data or information systems against viruses, worms, spyware, malware, intrusion detection, unauthorized access, denial of service attacks, and an ever-increasing list of attacks by hackers acting as individuals or as part of organized crime or foreign governments. Student programs are also available to people interested in beginning a career in cybersecurity. Meanwhile, a flexible and effective option for information security professionals of all experience levels to keep studying is online security training, including webcasts. 
A wide range of certified courses are also available. In the United Kingdom, a nationwide set of cyber security forums, known as the UK Cyber Security Forum, were established supported by the government's cyber security strategy in order to encourage startups and innovation and to address the skills gap identified by the UK government. Topic: Terminology The following terms used with regards to computer security are explained below. Access authorization restricts access to a computer to a group of users through the use of authentication systems. These systems can protect either the whole computer, such as through an interactive login screen, or individual services, such as a FTP server. There are many methods for identifying and authenticating users, such as passwords, identification cards, smart cards, and biometric systems. Antivirus software consists of computer programs that attempt to identify, thwart, and eliminate computer viruses and other malicious software malware. Applications are executable code, so general practice is to disallow users the power to install them, to install only those which are known to be reputable, and to reduce the attack surface by installing as few as possible. They are typically run with least privilege, with a robust process in place to identify, test and install any released security patches or updates for them. Authentication techniques can be used to ensure that communication endpoints are who they say they are. Automated theorem proving and other verification tools can enable critical algorithms and code used in secure systems to be mathematically proven to meet their specifications. Backups are one or more copies kept of important computer files. Typically, multiple copies will be kept at different locations so that if a copy is stolen or damaged, other copies will still exist. Capability and access control list techniques can be used to ensure privilege separation and mandatory access control. Capabilities versus ACLs discusses the use. Chain of trust techniques can be used to attempt to ensure that all software loaded has been certified as authentic by the system's designers. Confidentiality is the non-disclosure of information except to another authorized person. Cryptographic techniques can be used to defend data in transit between systems, reducing the probability that data exchanged between systems can be intercepted or modified. Cyberwarfare is an Internet-based conflict that involves politically motivated attacks on information and information systems. Such attacks can, for example, disable official websites and networks, disrupt or disable essential services, steal or alter classified data, and cripple financial systems. Data integrity is the accuracy and consistency of stored data, indicated by an absence of any alteration in data between two updates of a data record. Encryption is used to protect the confidentiality of a message. Cryptographically secure ciphers are designed to make any practical attempt of breaking them infeasible. Symmetric key ciphers are suitable for bulk encryption using shared keys, and public key encryption using digital certificates can provide a practical solution for the problem of securely communicating when no key is shared in advance. Endpoint security software aids networks in preventing malware infection and data theft at network entry points made vulnerable by the prevalence of potentially infected devices such as laptops, mobile devices, and USB drives. Firewalls serve as a gatekeeper system between networks, allowing only traffic that matches defined rules. They often include detailed logging, and may include intrusion detection and intrusion prevention features. They are near universal between company local area networks and the Internet, but can also be used internally to impose traffic rules between networks if network segmentation is configured. A hacker is someone who seeks to breach defenses and exploit weaknesses in a computer system or network. Honeypots are computers that are intentionally left vulnerable to attack by crackers. They can be used to catch crackers and to identify their techniques. 
Intrusion detection systems are devices or software applications that monitor networks or systems for malicious activity or policy violations. A microkernel is an approach to operating system design which has only the near minimum amount of code running at the most privileged level, and runs other elements of the operating system such as device drivers, protocol stacks and file systems, in the safer, less privileged user space. Pinging. The standard ping application can be used to test if an IP address is in use. If it is, attackers may then try a port scan to detect which services are exposed. A port scan is used to probe an IP address for open ports with the purpose of identifying accessible network services. Social engineering is the use of deception to manipulate individuals to breach security. Topic. Scholars equals equals see also